Hey everyone, it's the Geeks from the Geeks of Finance, and today we're discussing how can we use positive gamma to make money in the market. So uh, as we talk about gamma, you know, I've noticed the market generally seems to trend higher when we're in a positive gamma environment, and uh, it might be helpful to, especially the uh, viewers that aren't very familiar with gamma, you know, why that is. Yeah, so gamma is a second order derivative that basically is measuring the acceleration of option pricing. Option prices don't move in a straight line. There is a convexity to the movement of option prices. And we've talked about this a number of times in our other videos. If, if you guys want a brief introduction into how gamma exposure works, check out this video if you get a chance. Gamma is going to be highest when we are at the money. And so when we're in a positive gamma environment, prices moving into this curve here. And the more it moves into the curve, the more positive gamma exposure is and the higher the option prices at the at the money strikes are as well. And so oftentimes in positive gamma environments, option dealers are forced to hedge their positions by selling as the price goes higher and buying as the price goes lower. And this creates sort of a stabilizing effect on the market. And so generally in these environments, prices tend to be stable and oftentimes drift higher. So from what you've said, basically we would go long when gamma is positive. Is it that easy or is, you know, is there a little bit more to it than that? <laughs> yeah, good question. I mean, there's a little bit more to trading in a positive gamma environment than just by, you know, identifying that we're in positive gamma and then going long. Uh, there's two things that I really think you need to understand when you're trading positive gamma. One is you need to know where the big players are positioned. So we do that by analyzing the gamma structure. We can see where the big concentrations of gamma are for the particular stock that we're looking at. We can identify that by each strike price. I see. So you're looking at both the date and the price at which... Uh a lot of the gamma is concentrated. Right. And so these big concentrations can have outsized effects on the market. They can act as magnets drawing price to them, and they can also act as inflection points. They can be support and resistance zones as well. Our gamma exposure dashboard has the tools and data you need to analyze market positioning. Our members also get access to our community discord where we're discussing gamma levels and the trading action in real time every day. We'd love to have you join us. Check out geeksoffinance.com. We've got three different membership tiers from $29 to $159, something for everybody. So definitely sign up now, get access to our gamma exposure levels and very important supply and demand concentrations. The second thing you also need to know is how stretched is the gamma compared to its historical ranges? It's not enough to just know whether gamma is positive or negative. You need to know how positive is gamma or how negative is gamma. Gamma is a spectrum and you can have extremes. And gamma is gonna be different for every single stock. They're, it's gonna have a different sized spectrum. So just because gamma is positive doesn't mean that you should automatically go long. You need to know how positive the stock's gamma is relative to its historical range. And we actually measure this on our gamma exposure dashboard. Our GEX intensity gauge shows the total gamma exposure relative to its historical ranges. And so you can see how positive or how negative gamma is relative to its historical norms. That seems like that'd be helpful because then you're not just guessing if, you know, hypothetical 2 billion positive gamma is, uh, you know, what compared to, right? So I like that idea of having an indicator that would show that. Yeah. So for example, if you're at the extreme end of the GEX intensity gauge on the positive side, you know that volatility is really compressing and that option dealers are in buy the dip, sell the rip mode. So as volatility compresses, price drifts higher. That makes sense. I think I always think of the VIX when I think of volatility. But usually when I think of the VIX down, I think of the market going up and the VIX up, you know, the market going down. So it makes sense that if you're in a positive gamma environment and the market's going up, well, your volatility and hence the VIX is likely going to be uh, lower, you know, in a, in a lot of circumstances. Yeah, that's right. And you can see it here when you look at the gamma exposure data graph, there is a positive skew in the gamma concentration. And so as price moves towards this positive skewed concentration levels, 
volatility continues to compress further and further and further. And it's kind of like a spring. Like once you're all the way over to the very, very edge of this intensity gauge, it's basically saying that volatility is super compressed. Gamma exposure is on the far extreme. And we often see big reversals from these areas as well. So it's a, just another indicator uh, why it's important to measure how positive your positive gamma is relative to historical norms. And so the characteristics of positive gamma are volatility compression, buy the dip, sell the rip, positive skew in the gamma concentration data graph. And you oftentimes have dealers buying the underlying security when price goes lower, so pro providing a support underneath price and selling as price goes much higher kind of capping the upside. When we talk about skew, for those that may not be familiar with that term, you say there's a positive skew. I usually think of, you know, most of the, the all along the curve, you know, of, of the options that they're mostly, you know, higher strikes. Uh, how would you describe it? Yeah, that's right. It's when there's a disbalance between open interest on the call side, creating that positive skew. We've been talking about positive gamma you know, what it is, its characteristics. Maybe you could talk a little bit about our methodology for trading in positive gamma environments. Yeah, generally when we're in a positive gamma environment, we're looking for high probability entry points to go long. So we, number one, we identify where the biggest gamma concentrations are, and we look ahead up the options chain to see if gamma concentrations are growing over time at higher strikes. If that's the case, oftentimes, that gamma exposure leads price higher into those increasing gamma concentration levels. And so we're considering several factors here. We're considering gamma exposure over time. We're considering volume on a daily basis, how much interest is coming into the market at various strike prices. And we're also considering where on the spectrum are we? Where in the gamma structure is price currently trading? Are we just above zero gamma or are we on the far edge of the gamma exposure structure, which would increase the probabilities for a sell-off? The second thing we focus on when we're trading in a positive gamma environment is where we are in relation to the historical ranges. As we mentioned before, we have a GEX intensity gauge, which tells us where gamma exposure is relative to, to this stock's historical average. And so when we're in the positive gamma environment, that might be a signal for us to enter into long positions. But as the gamma exposure levels approach historical extremes, that oftentimes is a signal that it might be time to exit long positions uh, for the potential for a pullback. That pullback could be temporary or it could be significant. Now, I just want to show you a few examples. We're going to take a look at the SPY and NVIDIA. At the end of the day on November 1st, we had a big flip positive in gamma exposure on the SPY. And you can see ever since that point from around 420 up to 450, the SPY has been in positive gamma territory. Now price did not go up in a straight line throughout that period. There were times where price sort of flatlined and slightly retraced, but throughout the period, uh, from November 2nd to November 16th, price was generally in a positive gamma environment. Over that period, the market was up nearly 7%. And so there were multiple opportunities for long entries and for profitable trades during this time. Here's another example on NVIDIA. On November 2nd, NVIDIA also flipped into positive gamma territory and we saw big concentrations popping up at the 460 level. Price subsequently tagged 460 and we saw larger concentrations uh, growing at the 480 strike. After that, price went up to the 480 level and we saw further gamma concentrations growing at the 500 strike. And here we just tagged 500 just a few days ago. And so throughout that process, we've been, we were following the gamma exposure levels and identifying gamma exposure relative to its historical ranges. Now we've tagged 500 and the gamma exposure is in an, at an extreme. And so we think this is most likely signaling a reversal. And so Gamma exposure has led us every step of the way through this process, and that's how we use it to measure when price is trending higher, what the next targets are, and when we can expect major reversals. Don't forget, if you guys are interested in accessing the tools and data on our dashboard, you can go to geeksoffinance.com. We have several different membership options, and you'll also get access to our community discord. We do strategy sessions, trade ideas, and discuss a number of other topics. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.